So I'm going to talk to you about the genome, your genome, my genome, all our genomes. And you should be all really concerned, deeply concerned, but not for the reasons you think you should be, but because what you are missing regarding the impact the genomic revolution is having in each of your lives, from what you eat to what you drink, what you wear, your health, and the health of your family. So I invite you to join me in this adventure and see how genomics is completely changing our society today. So you all know about DNA, this molecule of life, three billion letters, this code packed in each one of our cells. A little piece of that DNA is called a gene. And genetics study the correlations between a gene and a certain disease or a certain characteristic. So what is the genome? The genome is not just a little piece of the DNA, but it's the entire DNA in one cell. It's the entire set of genes in a living organism. We all have DNA. Virus have DNA. Bacteries have DNA. Animals, plants, human beings. Politicians have DNA. <laughs> DNA, <laughs> DNA was discovered in 1953, not so long ago. Two great scientists, Watson and Crick, discovered this complex double helix, which is really the base of this great genomic revolution. So reading pieces of this DNA, or sequencing as we call the DNA, was one of the best and first achievements after the discover, discovery of the double helix. But being able to read the entire sequence of one human being, the entire three billion letters of one human being, was a great achievement. We mapped the moon, we mapped the earth, we mapped the ocean, we mapped the streets, we have even Google Maps. But mapping the genome is completely changing our lives. This is how you look like, each of you. This is your barcode. This is basically your instruction manual. <coughs> In these 23 books or chromosomes, as we call, there are all the instructions to, that make you what you are. Blue eyes, brown eyes, tall, shorter, susceptible to one disease or to another one, all is stored in this instruction manual that we're coming with. So sequencing one genome took 13 years, reading these three billion letters, 13 years. Now, technology has advanced very, very fast, and we can sequence genomes much faster. And there are sequencing centers all around the world, and different technologies in yellow, in, green, in blue, in red, all different technologies that are reading genomes every single day. There is one particular sequencing center in Iceland, where I used to work for four years, and there are not just Vikings in Iceland. There's much, much more than Vikings. They have this company that's called Decogenetics. And Decogenetics had in their biobank 150,000 samples of DNA from the total of the 300,000 individuals that live in Iceland. So half of the population of Iceland was stored in the biobank of this little island in the middle of the Atlantic. And they use all that DNA to make studies and understand the genome and understand how the genome is correlated with disease and how it's correlated with what we are and the interactions with the environment and all that. So all this is possible because now we can sequence genomes not for three billion dollars, that was the cost of the first genome, but now we can sequence genomes for three thousand dollars. And we don't need to take 13 years 
we can do that in two weeks. And we can do that here in Montreal. I can sequence here in Montreal your genome from any of you in two weeks for $3,000. So this is completely changing the landscape now for genomics. Well, we sequenced many humans after the first, of course, but we have also sequenced many species. Animals, we sequenced the potato genome, tomato genome, mice genome, you name it. 3,000 different animals, 4,000 different plants, virus, bacteria, any living organism basically is being sequenced right now. And all this is possible because the cost of sequencing is going down very, very fast. So many of you know about Moore's law. Moore, in the 60s, predicted that the price of computer and the power, the price will half every 18 months and the power will double every 18 months. So if we look now how computer's price, the log scale of computer price is going down, and we compare with the price of sequencing one genome, how dramatic and strong this decrease in price is. And if you think how computers have completely changed your life and how really you cannot live without a computer now. For every single thing you do in your life, you have a computer or a mobile device. Well, imagine how genomics will completely change our society. So how many of you here have seen a DNA sequence? Maybe one. How many of you here know how to program a computer? Maybe four or five? Well, same with computers. We don't need to know how to program a computer to be able to use a computer. We use computers every day. We don't know how to program. You don't need to know how to read DNA. You don't need to understand genomics to be part of the genomic revolution. We actually are, all of us, today, part okay, of this genomic revolution. So one of the most important applications of genomics is, of course, in human health. Your DNA knows more about your health than your doctor or you know about your health. We're now moving from an inefficient, curative and experimental medicine to a data-driven medicine where diagnosis, treatment, prognosis and most importantly, prevention is all tailored to an individual genomic information. Many of you heard the story of Angelina Jolie a couple of days ago. Angelina Jolie, her mom had a breast cancer. Her mom died at 56 years old from breast cancer. And she was really worried that she was eventually having the same genetic susceptibility to have breast cancer. So she decided to do a genetic test. And that genetic test told her that she, was, that she had 87 in percent increased risk of having breast cancer. So she really had a very, very high risk of having uh, breast cancer. So she decided to do a double mastectomy. This is a really difficult decision for any woman in the world. And for Angelina Jolie, with her job, imagine, very difficult decision. So genomics now is empowering people, all of us, to make decisions, to take care of our health, to be informed of what the risk is and how to manage our health. So if you, any person have breast cancer, there's not just one breast cancer, there are many types of breast cancer and you cannot treat all breast cancers in the same way. So if we take the woman here, some in blue, some in pink, they all have just, in principle, breast cancer. But if we do a genetic test of the tumor, we see that only the women in pink have an amplification of a gene called ER2. And only this woman in pink will respond to a very powerful drug that's called Herceptin. So now doctors need to do this test 
this is a genetic test in the tumor, and know if there is this amplification in ER2 before prescribing this very expensive and very powerful drug that is Herceptin that only works in the pink woman with that particular genetic change. So as Angelina Jolie did, I did too my genetic test. And I could see in the genetic test all this information, health risk, I could see drug, my profile for drug response, I could see what inherited conditions I could transfer to my children, and I could see millions of millions of information. I could download that and have it with me in my cell phone, carry with me anytime, wherever I go, I have my genetic information with me. And there are many interesting things coming from that. I learned, for instance, that a disease that was running in my family, macular degeneration, you get, you know, you, you cannot see when you, you lose your sight when you were about 60. I knew it was in my family, but it didn't, I didn't know that I, it was that I had the gene. So with this test, now I know I have the gene. I have increased susceptibility to the, to the disease. I do more often checkups on my eyes, and I take vitamins, and I do all kinds of different actions to prevent that disease from happening. I learned also with that test that I'm very sensitive to a drug called warfarin. Warfarin is a drug, is a blood thinner that is used in emergency rooms and for heart diseases. And there are individuals that only need two milligrams of warfarin to respond. There are others that need 18 milligrams. Okay. So when the doctors see a patient, just by looking at the patient, they will not know, is this patient, will this patient respond with two milligrams or will this patient need 18 milligrams? But now with my genetic test, I perfectly know and I can tell my doctor that I'm in the group of two milligrams. So please don't put 18 milligrams or don't put seven milligrams, I could be killed with that dose or completely damage my body. Amniocentesis. Testing the health of your ch child, your coming child, is very important. But it also entails some risk, and for the mom and for the baby. Now with genomics, we can do a simple blood test. No more needles in the uterus, no more risk for the baby, no more risk for the mom. You can sequence and get exactly the same information you get with the amniocentesis, but just with a blood test. You think you're alone. Well, you're not. There are trillions of microorganisms that live all around you. Your skin, digestive tract, urinary tract, respiratory tract. Scientists around the world are now sequencing the microbiome, as we call it. And they're learning how these microbes that live around you are making you more resistant or more susceptible to certain diseases. They're learning the interactions of those microorganisms, how they make your microenvironment, and how they make as I say, more susceptible or resistant to certain diseases. So applications in human health of genomics are, are, are just very, very vast, but not the only ones. The applications in other sectors like agri-food and like bioproducts started much later than in human health, but they are moving much, much faster. If you look at this graph to your left, you see that the population we are predicting to have around 50 billion individuals in this planet by 2050. But we will only have food for around 4 billion individuals, 4 to 5. There is something we need to do. We need to increase at least 70% the amount of food, the production of food, to be able to feed our grandchildren. How can we do that? With genomics. So many of you have heard about genetically modified organisms and how uh, we're changing DNA and all that. Well, the genomic revolution I'm talking to you today is not about GMOs, it's about GSOs. It's about selecting, it's not about modifying. It's about selecting the best crops 
the naturally existing crops, not creating new crops, not modifying, selecting the naturally existing crops, planting those, the ones that will grow faster, that will be resistant to pests and pesticides. There are British around the world now that are using the genomic technologies to select for cows that will produce the better milk, that will produce a better meat. We can also use genomics to uh, track the origin of meat. Uh, many of you maybe saw the news a couple of weeks ago where they were selling horse meat instead of beef in Europe. Well, with these two-hour genetic tests, you yeah. could see if you're eating horse or meat or beef. Pretty interesting. Now, look, think about the wood table you have at home. That piece of wood have, has exactly the same code, genomics code, that you, all living organisms have. So you could use that code to track that wood and see if that was exploited, that was coming from an illegally exploited uh, forest. You could do, you also use that code to select for trees that will grow faster, that will grow straight, and that will produce a better wood. Actually, scientists here in Laval University already designed a series of tests that could be used to select those trees and plant and reforestation programs only the trees that will have those qualities. So, where there is life, there is DNA, and where is DNA, there is genomics. With genomics, now we are understanding the world in a different way. And we are seeing the impact this understanding is having in making this planet a better place to live. So DNA is not only inside you, it's all around you. And DNA is not just the molecule of life, but it's the molecule that is changing your life. Thank you. Yeah.